Well, how you doing, everybody? I got to see an advanced screening of The Meg this week. This is directed by John Turtletaub and stars Jason Statham, Bing Bing Lee, and Rain Wilson. In The Meg, a team of scientists is exploring uncharted territory in the darkest depths of the ocean. Unfortunately, during their exploration, they discover a surviving megalodon, a huge friggin' shark long thought to have been extinct. It's still alive because Argol Fargol Blargol Science. And now they've pissed it off, and it's up to Jason Statham to stop it. After seeing the trailer, I assumed this was going to be a big, dumb action movie, and I was right. It is big, and it is dumb. Fortunately, the movie knows it is big and dumb, and it is not trying to be anything else. It absolutely does not take itself seriously, it knows its premise is ridiculous, and it's just trying to have as much fun with it as possible. It's kind of like Sharknado, except not quite as silly, and it also has a budget. A rather sizable budget, I hear. $150 million. Allegedly. I say allegedly because there are some moments in this movie where it does look pretty cheap. Some of the CGI looks really good. Some of it does not. Sometimes it looks like they put a lot of time, money, and hard work into the set design. Like there are parts of this ocean research station that they're on that look like something out of a Star Trek movie. It's really well done. Other times... You know, I'm sure it was a very nice green screen. I'll bet it was the best green screen money can buy. You can still tell it was a green screen. In particular, there are some shots of people piloting these one-man subs that look pretty bad. There are times when they do a very poor job of creating the illusion of motion, and I'm not sure who's more to blame there, the effects team or the director, but in either case, ooh. The plot of this movie is less science fiction and more fictional science. The pseudo-scientific explanation they come up with for how something the size of a fucking megalodon could stay hidden anywhere on Earth for any period of time is ridiculous, and I was not buying it, but at the same time, I never really got the sense that the movie expected us to buy it. This is what we gotta do to get the ball rolling and get the huge fucking giganto shark out in the open so it can start eating people. Just go with it and enjoy the ride. And if you need further proof that this movie is not taking itself seriously, its use of comedy should clue you in. There is as much comedy in this movie, intentional comedy, mind you, as there is horror, and it does a pretty good job with both aspects. They did actually get some laughs out of me, and I like that the movie didn't just become a jump scare fest. I did find it a bit weird that they actually refer to the shark in the movie as the Meg. That's not just a silly title they came up with, they actually call it that. Which is weird, because no one calls it that. No one in the history of ever has ever called it that. But they do in this movie. There's a point where I think it's Bing Bing Lee's character that first calls it the Meg, and it just comes right out of nowhere, just as casual as you please, and no one else in the movie bats an eye. It's just like, yep, yeah, that's what we're calling it. Go with it. The cast was at least competent across the board. I thought Bing Bing Lee was fine, Cliff Curtis was fine. Pretty much everyone was at least fine. Wilson was actually pretty good as the billionaire that's funding this ocean research station, and he does a good job of keeping you guessing, like, does he actually have a soul? Or deep down, is he just a greedy fuck weasel who would soon sell out his own mother? And I'm not gonna tell you which, because that would be a spoiler, but he keeps you guessing. Jason Statham, again, fine, but I couldn't help but feel he was horribly miscast here. As an action star, I think he's at his best when he has something to shoot or stab or punch, and he gets to do a little bit of that towards the end, but you gotta sit through almost two hours to get to that point. Most of the action in this movie involves him piloting submarines, and that really does not play to his strengths. And the handling of his character is a bit odd, come to think of it. His story is basically, he's encountered the Meg once before, that is really stupid. But anyway, he, he has encountered this huge fucking shark before, and no one else believed him, and they all thought he was crazy. And this is not handled well and doesn't really amount to anything in the end. He encounters two people from his past when he joins this research station. His ex-wife, who left him because she thought he was crazy, and the doctor, who 
diagnosed him as crazy, and you'd think this would lead to some tension, and it kinda does, at least for the doctor, for about a minute and a half, and then it's over, and they just kind of forget about it, and he kind of gets a redemption at the end, but it feels really forced, and as for his ex-wife, she's just kind of there. Like, they interact in one scene very briefly, again, for like a minute and a half, and that's it. She gets very little screen time, in fact. The whole story just wasn't written very well, but considering the writer's credits include such movies as Battleship and Whiteout, set your expectations appropriately. In the end, the movie does have quite a few issues, but I honestly did have a lot of fun with it, and I could see Spring and for a matinee on this one. Just know what you're getting into. This is much more Sharknado than Jaws. And that's all I got to say about The Meg. Till next time, take care.